Due to the new dynamic sort options added to the template reports, the Generate Report Display window has changed. You are now going to see three separate tabs. The information on the first and sec second tabs you are already familiar with. The third tab is the new sort options. So the Your Report Options tab will provide your general format settings and the report title. Now in order to move from one tab to the other, you can click on the tab or you can use the arrow buttons down at the bottom to advance to the next tab. Your second one, Query Options, contains your query parameters. So you're familiar with these as well. Um, I went ahead and put an 006 for my fund. Now the third tab is your sort options, and this is going to determine how the information is sorted, subtotaled, and if there will be page breaks. So in my example on my budget summary, I would like to include an additional sort option of inserting an object code. So underneath the sortable properties, this displays the existing properties in the report definition, including any suppressed properties. The selected properties by default include the properties that are already marked as sorted on the existing report definition. In order to choose other properties to sort on, you need to drag the property over from the sortable properties to the selected properties box. So I'm going to go ahead and find my object code, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag that over and insert it in between the other two. Now how the selected properties are displayed is the sort up order. So by default, the budget summary is sorted by first fund special cost center and then by expenditure account. Now you'll notice that both of these labels say the same thing, full account code. But you'll notice when I'm hovering over them, it will provide more detail as to which when it is. So when I hover over the first one, it's the cash account. When I hover over the other full account code, it's the expenditure count. Now if I want um, it to sort by fund special cost center and then object and then expenditure, I have to make sure that it's in this proper, proper sort order. So by going over here and dragging that over, I purposely inserted it in, be in between these two so that my sort options are correct. Um, another tip is you can also move multiple sortable properties at once. So for example, let's say I just want the encumbrances, future encumbrances, and unencumbered balance to be sortable properties as well. I can click on all three of those and I can drag them over and they'll be placed in here. Now if, I, if there are certain properties that I do not want to be included, obviously I can take these and drag them back. I can even click on both of those and drag them back. So, um, so I do have my selected properties set. And so at this point then, if this, and I do want a control break on object too, so I'm going to make sure that that's selected as well. And so if I want to save these sort options so I can use these same sort options in this budget summary report again, I can use the Save Recall up here and save it under a specific name. So I'm going to call it Budget Summary, Object Level 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. And so I, this is the Save and Recall is very similar to the Save Sets in the Classic Report. So when I want to run these same sort options within the Budget Summary Report again, I am just going to go into this Budget Summary Report and select my save set, and generate the report. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this report so you can see what it looks like. So when you think about it, in essence, you can have several different sortable save sets to choose from within that one budget summary report. Go ahead and save this and pull it up. And now you'll see my first sortable was by Fund Special Cost Center. My second sortable property was by the one-digit level object code, and then within that, by the expenditure account.